I'm excited because we're going to celebrate uh, a word today out of Luke 24. And, and before we jump to that, I kind of wanted to read it, get us all on the same page so we all head in the same direction. Uh, but I want to read the scripture. It says, Luke 24, verse 1, but on the first day of the week at early dawn, they went to the tomb. Taking the spices that they had prepared, they found the stone had been rolled away from the tomb. And when they went in, they did not find the Lord Jesus' body. And while they were perplexed about this, anybody been perplexed? Behold, two men stood by them in dazzling apparel, and they were frightened and bowed their faces to the ground. And the men said to them, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he told you he was going to go to Galilee. Man, what a word. How many people know he's not here, he's risen. Turn to somebody and say, he is risen. And uh, I just believe God wants to speak to us today through that scripture. Can we pray? Jesus, thank you. Thank you that we get to celebrate the resurrection. Thank you that we get to celebrate uh, what your life means to so many of us. And God, I pray that we would pause, that we would recognize today not only your sacrifice, but the resurrection, the new life that you bring. God, that this would not just be a word that we hear with our ears, but it would be a word that transforms our hearts and minds as you begin to speak to us. And so take your word, speak to your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, before we jump in, I do want to share that there is a response card uh, under your chair. So if you just look under there, we're going to use this kind of throughout the message. Uh, At the very end, I'm actually going to come back to the back side of this card, but right under your chair, you should just look under it. Let's see if you're the grand prize winner of this response card. Uh, All of you are winners. And so uh, just just grab this out. Feel free to fill it out just kind of as we're going through. It's just got some information. But on the back, uh, we do this on Easter to really kind of hear how we could best serve you in the days ahead. And there's just some areas that might be stressful or some barriers in knowing God, and we utilize that information uh, to really schedule uh, messages and, and, and ministries and things around that to help best serve our church and our people in our community. And so if you don't mind filling that out, and uh, if you don't want to leave your name, that's fine too. But you can, if you just fill out the information, that's always really good for us to be able to get on the back. And so feel free to fill that out. And at the end, uh, there's, there's a four little letters at the bottom, A, B, C, D. And so at the end of the message, I will get to those. If you're wondering what those are, uh, you're going to be wondering for just a couple more minutes, and then uh, we're going to jump in. So um, Luke 24, it's, this, it's the Easter story. It's this tomb that is empty. Jesus has been resurrected. These ladies that were, that were friends with Jesus, in a relationship with Jesus, knew Jesus, watched him die on Friday, arrive on the tomb on Sunday, and when they get there, it was not what they expected. The stones rolled away. Jesus is missing. It just wasn't at all what they had expected it to be. And I'm wondering if you've ever had a moment where what you thought wasn't quite what you expected it to be. I'm wondering if you've ever been on a vacation and what you thought was not what you expected it to be. When you got to the vacation and you didn't quite figure out, well, this is not how we had dreamed it up when we planned this. We're going to have some kids, and this is not what we expected it to be. We got married, but this is not what we expected it to be. I mean, these, these, these girls get to the tomb, and it was not what they expected. It was unexpected. My wife and I, uh, well, really, I did the planning. That was the first issue. Um, well, it was my wife's 30th birthday, and I wanted to do something special. And so uh, I was, like, looking online for, you know, Google something special, you know, like special plans on a birthday. And so I was like, you know what? Uh, I, I found on this site this, like, discount for a resort. That was, that was the second problem, you know what I mean? I, I was like, oh, this resort is on, is on discount, Travelocity, Expedia, you know what I mean? So I'm, I'm just on this site. I'm looking at all these different things, and there's this resort that's, that's, on, that's on discount, and it's in Orlando. So I'm like, it's not even that far. It's like an hour away. Like, this is perfect. And so I, I book this resort, and then I surprise her that night. Like, hey, we're going out. We're doing something awesome for your 30th. Going to a resort. 
She's like, we're going to a resort. I'm like, we're going to a resort, baby, discount. And uh, discount resort, I don't know. And so I go get her, we go to dinner, and long story short, we, when we arrive to Orlando, it's like midnight. And, um, and so we're, we're pulling in. I've never been to this place before. We're, like, pulling in, and, like, you know. You know when you know. You pull up, and you know. If you've ever been on a vacation where you know this was one of those I should have known. I pulled in. We get there. It's midnight, and we're just kind of looking at it, and we're like, hmm, it's dark. It's dark outside. It's midnight. Everything looks creepier at midnight. You know, so we pull into the resort, and I'm like, let's go. It's resort time, baby. I don't even know what we're going to do at a resort. I don't even really know what the resort is, but it had resort in the name, so it felt right to me. And so I go to get the key. I go inside. I'm waiting. I go to get the key. It's not very busy. Third sign. And uh, I, I went in. I was like, hey, can I, can I get the key to the resort? They're like, sure. They give me the key, right? And I don't remember the numbers, but it was like 203B. So I get the key. I'm like, why is there a letter on this key? I've never seen a letter. And why are we B and not A? Like, this is a little concerning. So I take the key. I go into, the, I, I, I go into my car, and um, we, we pull around to the thing. And, and this is totally a preference thing. You can call me bougie if you want. But I don't really like exterior doors. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like the interior doors that face a hallway inside the building. Not necessarily a, a hotel door that faces the outside of the world where everyone can rob me. You know, I just feel that way. And I'm like, something's about to go down with exterior doors. So, so we're pulling through the resort, and I'm noticing, oh, man, all these, all these buildings have exterior doors, right? And so we're, we're, we're catching on. I, I, these signs are happening. We get up to the place. It's like 1230. We got our bags. I like stick the key in the door. Exterior door. Open the door to a hallway. It's never, never happened before to me. I've just, I've never experienced this. The hallway led to two more doors. And I'm telling you, it was like Willy Wonka's hallway at 1230 at night. I'm like, I don't know what's in this hallway. I don't want to walk through this hallway. You know what I'm saying? It's late. We already have an eerie feeling. We're like walking through the hall. I get into the hallway and I'm like, come on, we're okay. We open up 203B and we realize the reason why it's B is because A shares a wall with us. I'm like, okay, that's fine. We may just be hearing each other, whatever. What? Okay, so I head into 203B. We get into, the, we get into the, the room, the resort, and we're like, okay, let's just relax. It's late. We feel a little awkward just because it's dark out. It's fine. Just turn on the TV. Turn on the TV. TV's not working. I couldn't make this stuff up if I tried. I call the front desk. I'm like, hey, TV's not working. They're like, yeah, it's because our Wi-Fi's not working. Like, what do you mean you don't have Wi-Fi? Like, we don't have Wi-Fi right now. I'm like, McDonald's has Wi-Fi. Like, everyone's got Wi-Fi. So I'm like, you don't have any Wi-Fi? They're like, no. I'm like, we, we just got to drown out the sounds of creepy things at 1230. So um, I'm like, okay, so no Wi-Fi. They're like, yeah, we don't know when it's going to come up. And I'm like, this is a lot of signs, a lot of signs. And so my wife and I are like, it's late. It's 1 in the morning. Let's just go to bed. So we decide to go to bed. We lay down. We go to bed. I go over, I turn off the light because the remote doesn't come out of the wall for some reason. It was a little remote thing, but it would not come out of the wall. So I go to get in bed. We lay down to go to bed. I'm not even kidding. 20 seconds later, light turns on. Nobody touched the remote. The light just turns on. We're laying, light turns on. She's like, what is that? I'm like, I don't know. (laughs) Somebody turned on the light. She was like, yeah, I don't know. There's nobody else in here, I think. Maybe it's 203A. I'm not really sure. So I get up. I'm all freaked out now. I go turn off the light on the wall. I wait. We're good. I get back into bed. No lie. 20 seconds later, light's back on. I'm, now, now we're freaking out. I was like, I've seen this movie. I'm not about this. I'm not about this movie. I'm not about this life. And so we're, we're you know, I'm like dismantling this fan trying to figure out how to get this light off. And so long story short, we're like, you know what, Let, let's just go to bed. We'll just go to bed. And how many people know in the morning I am downstairs at the front like, hey, it's been great, but we really got to go. This not on you. It's on us. We'll charge the one night, but can we, get a, can we get our money back for the rest of the nights? And then we went to the other hotel. Why? Because it wasn't what we had expected it to be. There's so many times in life when we think life is going to go a certain way. We think something that we want so badly is going to go a certain way. And then when we get there, we look around and go, this is not what I thought it was going to be. It was unexpected. I'm telling you, we dream 
in like puzzle form. I'm gonna launch this business. We're gonna we're and and you see the vision for the business, don't you? You're like, I see it. I see the I see the people, I see the customers, I see the and we see the vision. But oftentimes our life, when we step into that vision, turns into 360. And the things you didn't see in the vision because you only saw a piece of it, you start looking around and going, what's that dark corner over here? I did not see this part of the business. What do you mean there's this hard work thing going on? What do you mean the hiring and the firing and the figuring out? That, this was not the vision I saw. This was unexpected. I mean, how many times in life do we have an expectation that truly is not a reality? And these ladies run to the tomb. And their expectation for what they think they're about to go do gets wrecked. See, because they arrive at the tomb, it says in verse 1, On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices that they had prepared. They were prepared for the vision. They, they knew where they were going. On Friday, Jesus dies. On Saturday, because it's Sabbath, you're not allowed to travel. They spend 24 hours waiting to go back to see Jesus. The person that they love is dead, and he's sitting in this tomb, and they can't go be with him on Saturday because it's a day of rest. You are not allowed to travel, but on Sunday, they show up early in the morning with everything that they had prepared, and they went to the tomb, and what they found was not what they expected. It says they found the stone rolled away from the tomb, and when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. They didn't find what they were looking for. They found something else. And this is, this is what I'm wondering today. What do we do when Jesus isn't where, or Jesus isn't who, or Jesus isn't what we expected him to be? What do we do when we expect Jesus to be somewhere, and then we get there, and he's not there? What do we do when we expected Jesus to show up in a situation, but we can't quite quantify or understand why it seems like Jesus wasn't there? The, I mean, these, these ladies run to the tomb. They expected fully a dead Jesus inside of this tomb, but they didn't find a dead Jesus. They found an alive Jesus and a stone that was rolled away. They found the unexpected. If you're taking notes, you can write this down. Jesus may not be where I expected him but he is always where I need him. He may not be where you expected him to be. He may not show up the way you thought he was going to show up. You may not get healing the way you thought that there was going to be healing. He may not be where you expected, but I'm telling you he's right where you need him. He's right where you need him. They show up to this tomb. And they're looking for Jesus' body, but instead they find an empty grave. They show up to, to this tomb ready to grieve, ready to mourn, ready to cry, ready, ready to just feel hopeless and helpless. But they showed up to the unexpected. Instead of showing up to grieve, they found a reason to celebrate. Instead of showing up to death, they actually found life. Instead of getting what they expected from Jesus, they got exactly what they needed from Jesus. They may have wanted to grieve that day. They may have wanted to feel sorry for themselves. They may have wanted to stay in their trauma. But Jesus says, I don't stay amongst the dead. I stay amongst the living. This angel says in verse 5, why do you look for the living among the dead. I'm wondering today what we're looking for that should be alive, but we're looking among the dead. We're looking in areas and we're not finding what we're looking for. If you're taking notes, you, you can write down this point. Where I look will determine what I find. Where I look will determine what I find. Here's the angel's question. Oh, Jesus? No, he's a live God. <laughs> you showed up to the grave amongst the dead. You're looking in the wrong spot because my God is still alive. He's not in the dead. It perplexed them. 
when you went shopping for a car, and you're like, you know, we need a new car. Let's go shopping for a new car. And you pulled into Haverty's. Right? You rolled up in the rooms to go. You're like, let's go pick out a car. And you walked in the rooms to go. And what car do you want? You didn't find no car in rooms to go. You didn't find no car in Haverty's. Why? Because they don't sell cars at Haverty's and rooms to go. Because what I am looking for will determine what I, or where I go looking will determine what I find. I got I to gotta go to Nissan. I got to go to Mazda. I got to go to a dealership if I'm looking for a car. Now, if you're looking for a couch, try out a Haverty's. Try out a rooms to go. Look in those places, and where you're looking will determine what you find. But this messed with them. But Jesus was dead. So I came to the last place I saw Jesus. I came back to the last experience I had with Jesus. I went back to the last place I knew to look for Jesus. And it wasn't that they saw him. It was that they heard an angel say, he's not here. I think sometimes in faith, we arrive at a place where we're looking for an old encounter we had with God. And God's going, I have moved. I'm not just going to meet you in your old space. I'm going to keep doing a new thing. I'm going to keep stepping. I'm going to keep bringing you. I'm going to keep moving you forward in your faith. What are you, what are you looking for the living amongst the dead for? And then he says this, he says, while they were wondering in verse 4 about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them, and the fright and the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? This is the phrase. He is not here. He has risen. Anybody may grow up in church a little bit? He has risen. He is risen indeed. Come on, somebody, right? You know, I just heard that. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Well, it actually comes from the scripture. It's this angel reminding these people, he is not here. He has risen. Here's, here's a point you can write down. My here needs him. And we're about to get Dr. Seuss grammatically incorrect, so get ready. All the teachers in the house are like, what in the world? That does not make sense. But just let's roll with it. My here needs him. And here's here's the truth of what was happening at the tomb that day. They went here, but he is not here. They they went to the tomb because that was the last place they knew to go. And 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 I don't know what your here is, but I do want you to maybe just take a second and ask God, where is my here? Where is the here? That you go when you don't know where to go. Where is the here that you run to when you're really stressed out today? Where is the here when you feel the overwhelming odds of anxiety? Where's the here that you run to? When you have had a moment that has been sad and heartbreaking and you've suffered loss, where is the here? that you go to. When you have pain and you just want to feel numb, you don't want to feel emotions, where is the here that you go to? Because the here will determine if it's amongst the living or the dead. It's about the here. See, I I don't know what your here might be. For some of us, what you're looking for is not here. Well, what is the here? Well, it's not in the bottle. For some of us, the here is not not in a substance. Sometimes the here we run to is a relationship, but you're not going to find freedom. The here might look like an achievement, an accomplishment, something to put on the wall and to be proud of, but at the end of the day, that here still feels empty. The The here might be a status or a position or a promotion or a a way to feel like I have value for my life because I get to tell others what to do. But the weight of leadership can be crushing and that here is unfulfilling. 
The, the, the here might be an emotion, a safety mechanism. Oh, because I'm afraid to be vulnerable because I've been hurt before in my past, I rely on anger or I rely on bitterness or I rely on gossip because that here protects me from having to be hurt again. I don't know what your here is. But I'm just wondering if the here is giving you life or it's slowly trying to sap the life out of you. The here, the here. The angel says, he's not, he's not here. His freedom won't be found in the bottle. His freedom won't be found in your emotions. His freedom won't be found in your ability to grit it and shoulder it and be strong and go against the odds. That you're not going to find freedom here. No, no, no. He is risen. I think oftentimes we go here. We go here when we're angry. We go here when we're bitter. We go here when we're feeling insecure and we gossip. We go, we go here because, oh my gosh, the stress is so insurmountable. If I can get a prescription, if, if I can just get another drink, if I can just, the, the here, then maybe, then maybe. But that here always tries to come back and take for more. Can I give you some good news about the cross? He's not here. He is risen. He's risen. Well, what are you saying? Well, I'm saying while we settle for a cheap emotion or a cheap substance, we have a God who's risen above it. We have a God who says, I see you here, but you don't need to stay there because I have risen. I can pull you up higher. I can pull you above your addiction. I can pull you above what you struggle with. I can pull you above what you think is bringing you safety. I can pull you above those anger temptations that you give into to make you feel like a strong man. Yeah, hey, come on, we're just going to take another step. I, we, hey, I get it. He is risen. Come on, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift you up higher from where you're here is. I'm going to bring you up with me because this is what I came to do. I did not come into the grave to stay here. I came out of the grave to bring you here to bring you higher, to bring you another step, to bring you another level. I didn't just leave you here. Here? Amongst the dead? Not my Jesus. No, he rises above the dead things. He rises above the cheap things. He rises above the counterfeit things. And I'm grateful that I have a Jesus who doesn't just rise up and go, what are you doing down there? Man, you really should figure that thing out. He goes, no, 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 no. Philippians tells us he was already up here. And he looked down from heaven. And the father said, they're stuck down there. And all they have in their here is death. Because the weight of sin was crushing them. Jesus said, well, I can't leave them here when they're supposed to be here. So I have an idea. I'm going to go down there. And he leaves heaven in heavenly places. His royalty. His omnipotence. All of who he was as God. And he climbs down the stairway to heaven. <laughs> And shows up to our highway of hell and says, I know you've been here. I know you're struggling. I know you've got doubt. I know you, I know you feel addicted. I know your emotions get the best of you. And I know that prevents you from getting here. So God, I'll take it. I'll live a sinless life, but I want you to take the sin of every man, woman, and child, and I want you to put it on me, and I will pay the, the, the death price, the price of death, the penalty of death. I'll pay it. I'll take everyone's sin. I'll take the weight of the world on the spotless lamb, the perfect one, the one who didn't deserve death, but did it because he willingly wanted to change our here. So here he is on the cross, and he gives his life freely so that he can move into a tomb. So there he was, inside of the tomb, fully knowing there was no reason for them to be there because he didn't sin. So death couldn't hold him, and the grave couldn't hold him, and addiction couldn't hold him, and temper tantrums couldn't hold him, 
and gossip and slander couldn't hold him. And those people you think that are out to get you because the enemy wants to try to create a victim mentality couldn't hold him. And that gravestone began to roll away and some women showed up on Sunday and said, I'm just here to grieve. I'm just here to mourn. I'm here to weep a loss of my dead Jesus. And Jesus says, I'm not here anymore. We got some good news because we can start climbing a ladder with Jesus who brings us up to higher places, who brings us up to where he is. And he's so good that Jesus still, even though he did it one time, he paid the, he paid the debt. He died, he, he died to death. He brings people that choose him above their addiction and above their heartache and above, he just brings them up. He, hey, he's risen. But our Jesus is so good that if you're still here, he'll meet you here. See, in just a few verses later, it says that the women turned around and Jesus was here. The angel said, he's not here, he's risen. Jesus said, well, if they're still here, I'm going to be here. Hey. I know you're still here. I know that looks like a hard climb. I know you're still addicted. I know you're still struggling. I know you don't see your value. And I know you don't see your worth. And I know that you don't think you're worth it. And I know that you think you don't measure up. And I know that you still think you need to get it all together before we can make this climb. And I know you still think that I'm, I shouldn't even be sitting here right now. But look at me. I'm going to stay here until you're ready to go here. I'm going to stay here. And when you make the decision that we're going to move, I will carry you by the hand. And you can live a risen life with me. I know you don't think you're valuable. So I'll stay here until you start believing me when I tell you you are. When you start believing that the cross was absolutely not only because of the strength that Jesus had, but because the value he sees in you. The value of an item is always determined by what somebody's willing to pay. You're invaluable. So we'll stay right here but I love you too much to leave you here when I have a life and a calling and a purpose that's so much greater. I refuse to allow the enemy to keep you in your trauma when I can turn that trauma into purpose, when I can turn that pain into the calling that I have for your life, when I can take these things that you think you cannot get past. Watch what I would do, Jesus says, if you would take my hand. I'll move you from here. This is the good news of a cross and an empty grave. What are you doing looking for the living amongst the dead? That bottle, that habit, that issue, that's not going to rescue you. Oh, but my Jesus will. I was 16 years old when this became a reality for me. I grew up in church because my mom went to church. And where mama goes, you go. Mama says, we going to church? You're like, yes, we are. Yes, ma'am. I wasn't following Jesus, but I was following my mom. She was following Jesus. Can I encourage some parents real quick? You keep following Jesus. Your kids are going to follow you before they follow Jesus. So don't quit. They may not be in here right now. But you keep following Jesus. You keep praying to Jesus. You keep modeling in your home what it looks like to have faith. You don't have it all together. Release yourself from that. You don't need to have it all together. You keep following Jesus, and you just make sure you keep bringing them kids following you, and they'll find them. Jesus will show up to their here. He'll show up to wherever they are. 
and they're going to have a moment. And I was 16. I was on the front row. My sister's getting baptized. I'm listening to over 20 middle school kids give their life to Jesus and share their stories. And I'm like, what? You're in middle school. How are you going through this? stuff like what in the world you're making a decision to follow Jesus because you want to move from death to life like they understood oh I don't need to stay here because I have a Jesus that can move me here then I want to make that decision and follow him and I listened to story after story and it was the first time I heard God for myself not audibly but I'm crying and I'm feeling something on the inside I'm looking at my mom I'm like why'd you bring me here you know she's like here's where you need to be because Jesus met me here I gave my life to Jesus. I was baptized the next Sunday. I got into a life group. I got into a serve team. I got connected the following Friday, and my life has never been the same again. Why? Because Jesus met me here. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I just turned 32, so 16 years, come on, math, of following Jesus. And I don't have it all together. I'm not perfect, and I'm not going to try to be. I'm just committed that if Jesus goes up a step, I'm going to go with him. Jesus is like, hey, man, we need to deal with your anger. You're cursing out a lot of people in the middle of this football field at 17 years old. What's the matter with you? And I'm like, I don't know. That's all I've known. That's how I feel strong. Let me show you what true strength is. Ever tried being meek for a week? No. You ever tried holding your tongue? No. You want to see some strength? Try holding your tongue. You want to see some strength? Come follow me. You want to see some strength? Just begin to get some meekness. Just begin to go low when people go high. Just begin to learn that I'm the one that raises you up. It'll change your life. It'll change your life. Come on, can we bow our heads, close our eyes across this room? Thank you, Jesus. In this room and online, I'm going to count to three here in just a second. I'm just give you an opportunity to make a decision to follow Jesus. And the decision's completely yours. Don't feel manipulated. But I want you right there in your own seat. Just begin to ask God, why am I here? And if you have a new here for me, then today I want to receive that. If you want to make a decision to follow Jesus today, we're going to give you that here in just a second. One, if you make that decision, you need to know that God loves you. Two, you need to, make, you, you need to know if you've made this, this decision before, you can make it again. Because it's a commitment to following him. And today could be the day where you say, God, I'm recommitting. I'm going to put my feet where your feet go. I'm going to follow where you take me because I can't stay here anymore. And three, right now, just put your hand up. Put it right back down. Anybody that wants to make a decision to follow Jesus, put that hand up either in this room or right there wherever you are. See those hands? Right, right, right there in your room, wherever you are online, wherever you're listening to this word. Just say, today I'm making a decision to follow Jesus. I'm going to pray for you in just a second. There's a second group of people I want to pray for. Maybe today you're a believer, but you're saying, oh, man, I'm following Jesus, but I just realized I've identified some years that Jesus is trying to pull me out of. If that's you, just shoot your hand up, put it right back down. Anybody? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to pray for you in just a second. Thank you, Jesus. God, for every believer in this room that just says, I, I need my hair to change. I'm following Jesus, but I, I, I'm identifying some things. I need, I need Jesus to, to help me to rise above. I need Jesus to lift me up out of. God, I pray for your power, the power of your spirit and your strength that works on the inside and manifests through the outside to start changing lives and transforming habits and changing minds in Jesus' name. The belief of the lie that created a behavior or a habit be broken in Jesus' name. God, I pray for new beliefs. I pray for an identity and a calling and a oneness and an understanding of who you are to them, that when they understand what you have called them to be, then they understand what you have spoken over their life, and they come into agreement with the belief that you have for them, that you would change the trajectory of where they're headed. You would work new behaviors. You would work new habits in Jesus' name. And today we're going to pray all over this room. If you make a decision to follow Jesus, even if you've prayed this before, we're going to pray it out loud. No one's going to feel singled out. But if you're praying it for the first time, today's where you're saying, I want to make a decision to follow Jesus. The Bible says to believe in your heart and confess with your mouth and you, you would be saved. 
And this is what I believe, that when we con confess outwardly what God is doing inwardly, it just solidifies a date in our mind. This was the day I made a decision to change, to turn and go a new direction. Come on, let's pray this together. Say, Jesus, today I make a decision to follow you. I know I'm not perfect, but I'm going to follow the perfect one. I know you can change me from the inside out. And so I give you my sin. I give you my life. And I ask you to lead me. I believe you died on the cross for my sin. And you rose up from the grave so that I could be made new. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thank you for watching our Grow Life Church YouTube channel. Our hope is always to help you better connect to all that God has for you. Subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a thing. Fill out a digital connect card so that we can stay connected with everything that's happening in and through our community. You can also support the mission by giving online as we continue to bring people into a growing relationship with Jesus. Thank you again for watching. We hope to see you soon.